question faster today. I got you, my man. He said, rank these big man peaks, one through eight. We got Tim Duncan. We got Shaquille O'Neal. We got Anthony Davis. We got Dirk Nowitzki. We got the Joker. We got the process. We got the big ticket, and we got the Greek freak. Mm -hmm. These eight big men peaks. Can, can, we, can we first start by defining what a peak is? So I thought peak as one to three years. That's what you try to do. Uh, preferably the three year mark. I usually give three years kind of a peak thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like the right kind of the right level. Three years, five seems a little much, but I, I get it. One seems a little too short. So three is my number. I don't know what you guys think. So Anthony Chief, Davis showed up. Anthony Davis showed up in twelve. If I'm, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. So he showed mm -hmm. up in twelve. Anthony Davis's peak seasons. I I I got a, I got a, I got from maybe seventeen to twenty. I'm thinking 17, maybe 16 to 20. I think those were his peak years. Were those years, were those peak seasons better than from 98 to 2003 Shaq? No. no, no. Shaq is one. No, Shaq is number one. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so it's consensus. So it's consensus that Shaq is number one. Yeah. Duncan, yeah, just, Dun Duncan. With that. Now Duncan got it. Now, now we talking about Duncan in a different way. The reason why I'm saying that is because Duncan switched positions. Because Duncan went from the four to the five, and he was elite at the five. He still was making all league defensive teams at the five. Like they still was winning championships with him at the five. Now him at the four, those were probably his best seasons. Yeah, his offensive what, what, game was probably better. What, what was his? Yeah, what was Duncan's was peak seasons at the four? I'm gonna go with from '99 to about 2005. I think those were his peak seasons. So long. Was that? Is. Was that? Was was? I want to get 03 in there. So it just depends on what 03 is in the 05 Duncan isn't as good as 03 Duncan. Yeah. Like, so let's let's let's, let's, let's say 2000 to 2003 for Tim Duncan. Let's let's choose that three years. I'm cool with that. Do we factor in do we factor in help when we do these peaks? No. Um, unless oh, unless you guys okay. unless you guys want to say well, because it's them at their peak. We yeah, but what if they got hurt peak. during those seasons? Like Yanis is in his peak, I'd argue like the last three years, but he's been hurting the playoffs for the last two years. So does that hurt yeah. his peak? Well, now let me ask you this, Mars. It, 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 I think it, it does. It, I think it has to hurt his peak a little bit more. And okay. and not only that, Ox, are these his peak seasons? Like, like when did Giannis's peak start? Giannis showed up in 13. When did his peak start? Well, I think it, I think 18, his prime 19. started in like 18 or 19. I think his peak yeah. started in 2020. I think his prime started yeah. in 17. I think like so, so what, what we going for you yeah. is 19, 20, 21? I'm thinking 18. I'm thinking if I'm throwing in 19 in there, respectfully, he's going down the list. Respectfully. Okay. Okay. Yeah, for, for me, it's it's the year he won the championship and probably these more recent years too. So yeah. 20, could possibly start the year before. I could go yep. 20, 21, 22. Yeah, I could do that. Okay. I could get those that. are the only years he was healthy in the playoffs. It's still, it's still, it's still, it still puts him at number five, respectfully. But I was I was gonna say, I don't even know. I, I got to me, I got 02, 04 KG as my two. KG's number two on my list, too. Yeah, KG's number two on my list. Duncan's third on my list for peak. Same with me. Same with me. KG had a four-year stretch. KG had a four-year stretch. Now, this may sound like it's not a lot today, but KG had a four-year stretch. We went 23 and 12. That with doesn't sound like a defense. lot today. With amazing and defense. He was a first-team all-league defender. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a lot today, but in 2002, in a big-man league, going four straight years at the four spot at 23 and 12, playing elite defense, who else was doing that? Duncan was doing that. Shaq was doing that. That's it. Like Rasheed Wallace, Chris was Chris Webber doing that? Elite nah, with the elite, not, with, elite with, 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 the, with the elite defense. Webber wasn't doing that. Sheed wasn't doing that. And this was, and by the way, this was a power forward era. Dirk wasn't doing that. I sure the thing like, about it is oh. the, the numbers do Tim Duncan and uh Kevin Garnett absolutely no justice. Like if we were just yeah, to look at the numbers. stat sheet, if we were just oh, yeah. to look at the stat sheet, you guys, hey, you guys have no idea how good Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett was. Right. It, the the why, numbers do it no justice. Right. That's why this. That's why these kids in the chat are are saying what they're saying. But we we know the truth. Right. We know the I truth. mean, yeah, I hear a lot of Giannis is better than KG. That bothers me. But I think KG. I'm not gonna say he played in the wrong era, but I think KG's game traveled better from the 2000s than damn near anyone who played in the 2000s That's in terms true. of what he was able to do defensively in terms of his jump shooting ability he wasn't that physical imposing interior force like a Shaq or a Duncan he was more on the outside versatility 
passing, processing, um, versatility on defense in terms of switching and just scheming. Mm-hmm. That stuff look looks like it would travel to this game and the 2020s a lot more seamlessly than other guys. So I have KG probably number two, but there might be a hint, a hint of bias of how I just feel his game would travel to today. <laughs> Whereas maybe Tim Duncan was more effective in the 2000s. I have it too. But KG, I just feel more comfortable with him in a variety of different roles. But I don't know. I got. I, I think KG. I think KG at his best is better than Duncan at his best. That, that's where I'm at with it. But and I think that, that that's, that's two where and you three and I and that's where you and I differ, Moss, because I think Duncan at his best was better from a defensive stance. Don't get me wrong. I think KG was an elite rebounder. And if we do if, if we're if we're looking at the numbers, sure. I mean, I think KG was. I think he led the league in rebounding what four straight years. But during his peak, he was a glass cleaner. When was Duncan, the glass cleaner. Duncan was the glass cleaner on, I feel like, inferior teams, not from KG, but inferior teams that were winning. If you look at the talent level that he had and what he had to do as a defender, making up for guys like Avery Johnson, making up for older guys like David Robinson, I got to clean glass more. I got to rim protect more. I do have to play on the perimeter. Even though it's a big man era, I do have to play on the perimeter because I got to go out and I got to go out on the wing and I got to guard Chris Webber. I got to go out on the wing and I got to guard Rasheed Wallace. I got to go out on the wing and I got to guard Antonio McDice. And not only do I have to deal with these guys, I also have to score too. And in the process of me doing that, I'm carrying my team deep into the playoffs. Duncan, as a defender, his ability to close out, not only his ability to close out, his ability to protect the rim without fouling. I think that that's the edge that I give him over KG during this time. The physicality is definitely a big edge for Duncan. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, KG struggled to guard Shaq, so he's not that good. Like, give me a break. But Duncan did a better job against Shaq than damn near anyone probably could have. Like, he was very, very strong, even though he was a slighter frame than Shaq obviously was, but he was very strong. And that's why he was also so good in the post because he would back you down and get four feet from the rim and then do his little sweeping right-handed hooks. Not Mars, real that, quick, I want you to but... keep going too, Mars, but would it be also because Duncan put Shaq on the defense? Would that also have a lot to do with him doing a better job against Shaq? Because there, were, there weren't many guys back then who could put Shaq on the defense like Duncan could. In terms of make Shaq work? Yes. Um... Yeah, I think that's a part of it. I also think a part of it is having David Robinson there next to you. Um, but I just think I just think Tim Duncan's physical imposition gets underrated because the most physically imposing player probably ever was in the era next to him. So Duncan didn't look like an outlier because the outlier among outliers is there next to you. It's like right. It's like in some regard, Clay and Damian Lillard get underrated as shooters because they're in the era of Steph Curry. It's like if they if Steph wasn't there, you'd be calling Dame the best thing you've ever seen. But Steph's there, you become kind of numb to what Dame is doing. I think that's similar with Duncan's physicality. I can understand picking Duncan over KG because his scoring was just more reliable, especially in the postseason, because mm-hmm. he didn't rely on a tough array of just mid-range pull-ups. Like KG lived from like that 16 to 20 20 foot range. Yeah, and like money just money naturally money. that's less efficient yeah, than what Tim Duncan's money generating. Money. The uh the, One of the, the best. The thing about Tim Duncan is, like how you said a minute ago, his strength I think is extremely underrated. Tim Duncan was very strong. Like just that that quick that quick spin move on the block when you when you're getting when you're getting pushed in your back to be able to spin off that. Like he doesn't. Tim Duncan did. I mean, obviously he had a drop step, but yep. that wasn't a drop step. You know what I'm saying? That was a quick spin off the body, right. and to do that and be that strong and to stay on balance. I don't know if you understand how strong your base and your core have to be. Tim Duncan was extremely strong. Like, and you sure. can see it. You can see it in his game if you know. I'm convincing about. myself to put Tim Duncan number two as I talk. Now, um, yeah, I'm about, I'm about, to, I'm about to stop talking because I got yeah, KG at two, and I want to. Yeah, like I'm convincing myself. That's what I'm saying. Because my next, like, my, my next question, next question to Ox. That was my next question to Ox. Ox, and I know you're a KG guy. I need you to take your KG fan hat off, and I need you to put your basketball analyst. Well, I'm also, I'm also a Tim Duncan guy too. That's what I'm talking about. And I need you to take your fan hat off, and I need you to put your analyst hat on. What's the edge that you've given KG over Duncan at that point? And we're talking about peaks. We ain't talking about all time. We're talking about a three, four year span. Why mm-hmm. was KG ahead of Duncan, and how much was it? Um, you know, <laughs> you know, chill. He's not. Tim Duncan should be number two. KG should be number three. Okay, hold up. But, hold up. but, but, but the thing about it though, chill. Mm-hmm. I think we can. I think we can talk about some things that aren't measurable. KG's presence alone on the defensive end. 
is was a little bit more like just knowing KG's out there. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? His presence, what y'all call it, uh, his aura, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you will. But KG, KG's ability on the perimeter too. Like KG, KG's ability to get it and go mm -hmm. off the glass on the rebound. So in transition, KG with the ball, KG running the floor without the ball, KG playing perimeter defense, KG able to handle the ball on the perimeter are things that are, if you ask me, are far superior to Tim Duncan's ability. No, although Tim, I, I although Tim passing, Duncan, Tim, 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 Tim is passing. Oh, I used to watch. KG I used to watch KG. KG yeah, I used to watch KG, KG dropping that behind the back pass off the mm -hmm. baseline mm -hmm. to Michael Ola Candy. Like you know, what I'm saying so. Yeah, good. That's a, that's a good call too, there, gentlemen. Uh, his passing. It's, I don't it's, think it's, we that, give, that, that, that two that two three spot is really hard for me. I don't think yeah, we give Duncan right. enough credit for his ability in transition to take the ball off the glass and go because yeah. that was that wasn't going on during that time. Like the big man gave the ball up and he filled mm -hmm. the lanes. He was either running from rim to rim or he was running on the wing. You saw the big fella put his head down and run. That's my, primarily what he was doing. Duncan would grab the ball off the glass and go with it. Now he mm -hmm. wasn't throwing the ball between his legs and behind his back like you got like you see guys today. But I think that Duncan was a lot more skilled than we give him credit for in transition. Sure. A lot he's doing a little cool crossover game. here and there. I see, I see, yes. I see, I see. But yes, back when Duncan was like actually KG, a really though? good athlete. No, no, he's not KG. Right. KG was a right. three playing the four in terms of movement and agility and those things. That. And also in why he played. He would the be a three today, today, as a matter of fact, to be honest with you. He'd probably be a five today, but that just says a lot about him. He going. would play the five, but he could play, he could play the three, four, and the five. Yeah, yeah. KG yeah. played today. 100%. I got K, I got KG, but Duncan, Duncan and KG. I like if someone says Duncan, I'm gonna like, oh my god, you lost your mind. Yeah, I'm right. It's, I'm flip flopping, right but away. I'm going with KG. The four spot though. The four spot. Chill, chill. Hold, right, right quick, Jalen. So, so Mars, Ox, Chill, and Jalen. You guys all have Shaq at one. Well, yeah. I think everybody has Shaq at one, and then it, it flip flops between Tim Duncan. Duncan and I got no, Duncan. We don't. Uh, right, Chill Pin. has Duncan. I got Duncan at two. I have KG. Jalen has KG and. Ox, I think, has Duncan. I think Ron's going to kick me off the show when he hears my last. He's going to say, I got Arvidas Sabonis that one. I do have Arvidas Sabonis that one. This is crazy. Yeah, Arvidas. Hey, Pin, I need your top three right now. Just just, just three. You just want a teaser? You don't want the whole thing? You just want the teaser? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get into it. We got time. We got time. All right. I'm going to go Jokic number one. Jokic at the one. Shaq number two. Diesel yeah, just at the three. And I'm going to tell you right now, my favorite player on this list, my favorite player on this list is Tim Duncan. That's my favorite player. Right. And I got him at four. Being better and your favorite player is not the same thing. That's not the same I thing. I disagree I with Jokic, but I can understand the rationale. Giannis yeah, over Duncan. Why? Okay. So in terms of peak, right, the way Jalen described it, and I think the way we've all been saying it is top three years, right? Excuse me. Three year Giannis is insanity. The career of Tim Duncan and the longevity is where I say the metamorphosis and how he molded himself from first option, a second option, power forward, center, shooting, getting down in the low post. Like Tim Duncan's career is the best career on this list to me. Sure. It's, it's better than Shaq's career because of longevity. Mm -hmm. I also consider portability between eras, right? I want to think about Nikola Jokic in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100. You know, I'm not just saying you get to, you know, live in the era that you played in. I'm port I'm porting you out of that era and I'm putting you in different eras and saying, what kind of a problem are you going to be in the 90s? Could you even hang in the 90s? Could you hang in the 2000s? Could Shaq hang today? Now, you would say, oh, of course, Rob. He could he could hang, Penn. He could hang today. But Giannis I'm saying destroyed the 90s. He would have. I think Jokic, uh, Jokic and Giannis would have done really, really well in the 90s. I think both these guys would have been big problems in the 90s, right? Is that peak Jokic, talk? Oh, is, this, is this peak talk? Oh, it's total, portability it's talk. Well, he's it's saying peak, the, them look, at their best. Jokic just peaks, peaks for himself. He has three MVPs, and it's and he's getting those MVPs at literally the peak. I want to say right now, I don't know if y'all disagree or agree. This is the most talented the league has ever been. Talent. Just talent. I'm not saying this is the best it's ever been. Players, I'm talking about pop, pop. I don't I'm know if you get those MVPs in the 2000s, though. 
I think with what he was doing a lot of MVPs what he was, in the 2000s, bro. I, 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 it, it depends on freedom. It depends on how yeah, much maybe. restriction you put on a guy with Jokic's skill set in the 2000s. I don't look know. a lot. A I, I lot think of he might he might get Steve Nash's MVPs, but. A lot of what Yoko <laughs> does not do well it, not me. defensively, he wouldn't even be asked to do in the 90s. How many bigs is he coming out? How many pick and rolls is he defending? How many times is he having to raise up past the level of the screen? How much pick and roll are we running today? How many, how many guards are launching from three? Look at how much bigger the court is right mm -hmm. today than it was in the 90s. If you put well, Jokic well, in the 90s, there's also his... other defense he has to play, though, in the 90s. He might not have yeah, to he's play not a, he's defense, not a bad but... post defender. This is this is the argument that I don't get with Jokic, right? He, well, he, he's, he's not, not a bad post defender. It's just but... the same argument as Carl Anthony Towns. Dealing Carl with? I'm saying he's him having to deal with even like an Elijah Ewing, Patrick Ewing, David Robinson. Pa Patrick Ewing is giving him the business. Like let's let's stop. Bro. He might not be a, he, he might keep, not be a bad post defender, but but he's so what he he's holding he's holding Patrick. He's having a bad night against Jokic. Patrick uh, Ewing's coming in the game like, God Ron. damn, I got to deal with this motherfucker, Jokic. Man. Okay. Oh, okay. No, on, on offensively. Fair, fair point. Defensively, he's going to be mad. Offensively, he's going to be like, I'm about to get mine too. Okay. You you That's know on the other end, me. Patrick Ewing got to guard Nikola Jokic, right? No, well, we know that. We, we don't even got to get into that. Pat guards him better than he guards Pat. I watched, I watched a worse player than Nikola Jokic in Arvidas Sabonis come with basically no legs, no ankles, no knees, and be one of the top seven centers in the league when he was past, way past his prime. Talk to anybody who watched Arvidas Simonis in the 80s, crazy, different player. But in the 90s, really different equation. He was mobile, like he was not very mobile at that point. He was slow, and he was still a very, very good player for the Blazers, right? He was a starting center. He was easily one of the top eight centers in the league, in my opinion, at the height of when the big man position was at its best. Everything he was doing was stretching the defense. He was shooting from the free throw line. He was shooting 22 feet. And he was always open because bigs don't guard out that way. So I'm saying you put Jokic right now. You just poured him into the 90s. He's a problem, man. He's a big problem in the 90s. So I, I like him there. And, you know, when I go down the list, it's Duncan next after Giannis, then KG. I'm really torn between KG and Duncan. Again, Duncan peak KG peak is you can make an argument KG over Duncan for sure, but the career Duncan wins. Then I got Dirk. Then I got MB. Then I got AD. I don't think anyone's got AD higher than eight. I don't yeah. know. Maybe someone really is, hates is AD. Embiid last for everybody. I mean, I, no, look, no, no. Don't, don't, don't disrespect my guy AD. Like, yeah, he. No, I don't think he's last. Like, he's just I, a step below everyone. Yeah. We, we know that now. He's, 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 he's not last. Right. Hey, hey, he's, I didn't say he's ahead of anyone, but I want to be like, we can have a discussion here ahead of someone. That's why I want to You can have a discussion. I don't like that. It's just like, oh, yeah, AD 8, who's the top 7? Nah, AD has a conversation against 7. Whoever 7 is, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, the way Shaq should be number 1 on this list, Nah, AD nah. should be number eight on this list. Nah, Respectfully, I can make the case. Respect. Why? Do you value Davis defense? AD versus Dirk. I can make the case for Anthony really Davis. Value wait, wait, who, who am I forgetting? I only got seven people. It's only seven, right? No, it's Shaq, eight. Shaq, Shaq Duncan, KG, oh, I Jokic, forgot about Joel. Giannis, My bad. I forgot Joel, Joel AD, and Dirk. Yeah. Right, Ron, we could talk. We could talk Joel and AD. Okay, first. Of yeah, all, I can Ron, make. I can make the let's, case let's, for let's, AD. Let's, over I was about to say, Ron, do you remember Anthony Davis? Like the 2017, 2018 Davis, the 2016, 2017 Anthony Davis. The 2019, I, 2020, I, Anthony Davis. You remember that dude? I remember Yo, him, but all, all of sure? these have been the best the player in the league. Never AD moved never been. me the way Tim Duncan moved. Well, that's not AD no. peaked at the time that LeBron and Steph were around. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not okay. And Kobe was in the league. All of these guys were in their peaks for the for the for the most part. Yeah, yeah but Pat says AD was never the best in the league, and I'm just saying. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what I'm addressing. Yeah. Well, AD I mean, right. Pin. Yeah, even with that being said, all a majority of these guys were in the league and all fighting for the best position. And it was it was at times where Shaq was the best. It was a time where Duncan was the best. It was a time where KG was the best. It was definitely a time where Kobe was the best. So I mean, that that doesn't necessarily hold too much weight. But what I what I do want to say is AD never moved me the way. Dirk moved. I think you was, was wrong. That's cool. It, it That's was cool. it was a moment in time. It was it was some years in there where you were like, "Yo, Dirk is." When did Giannis? When did when when did Giannis pass AD? Twenty twenty one when AD got hurt. That's what I was thinking. 
because in 20, up until that in 2020, point, it was a conversation. I don't it was a, and, and this was a back-to-back -back league MVP, Giannis, and it was a serious conversation between these guys because the defense was not that far off. The defense was right there. Anthony Maybe Davis is a bucket getter. Anthony Davis had a better mid-range game. Anthony Davis, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go as far as say he was a better rebounder than Giannis, <laughs> but he was just as good a rebounder as Giannis. Just Ron, as it's good. not... It's not the a, 90s, Ron. We can't eat donuts for breakfast no more, bro. <laughs> yeah, Ron just, Ron just. You a it it got to be. So we can eat donuts for breakfast my, my, in the my, 90s? Bad, my bad, chill. I'm just going to summon my brother's health. My bad, chill. Go ahead. And, 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 what, you know what type of workout I got in yesterday? Mm. What type of workout? Trying to get those fast yesterday, exorbitant carbs. All he want to know. I'm scared. All he want to hear this, bro. My bad, chill. My bad, chill. Go ahead. I'm just thinking about Anthony Davis and Giannis. So I'm thinking after 21, when they won the NBA championship and AD got hurt, that's when it became more of, less of a conversation between Giannis and, and Anthony Davis. And the fact that I watched him kick, I watched him kick Anthony Davis' ass. But then Anthony Davis would come back and put 40 and 20 on him. Mm -hmm. But then he got hurt, right? But up until then, I mean, Ron, in 2018, I think he was, he went almost 30 and 10 that year. He was 30 and 10 that year was at not only not only elite level defense, he was carrying that unit offensively as their go-to guy, basically took out the Trailblazers, was the best player in that series. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I think Giannis was doing that too. But to the level of what Anthony Davis was doing in that 2018 series, in that 2018 season, I mean, I I don't think that I don't think you give Anthony Davis nearly as much credit as you should. And he was doing he was doing that 17. 18, he got he didn't get hurt in 19. They shelved him in 19. They mm -hmm. made it seem like he was hurt. And then in 20, I mean, he he was in he was in the league MVP conversation. He wasn't gonna win it, but he was in it. He was a main, he was one of the major reasons why they won the NBA championship off the elite level defense that he played that year. He wasn't a liability at the strike. He had a money mid-range game. He was a better ball handler. It wasn't until Anthony Davis got hurt in 21 that the conversation started to go this way a little bit more, as opposed to when they won the NBA championship. It was really right here. I don't think you give Anthony Davis nearly as much credit as you as you should, Ron.